Good day guys, welcome to the channel of SA Country Network. In today's video, I want to answer some of your questions that came through in the month of November. And I'm quite excited to share some of my answers with you. And I think you guys asked a lot of valid questions in the month of November. So um, so I think let me jump down to my computer. Remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. But let me quickly see if I can answer some of your questions for you. Mm -hmm. So let's quickly have a look through. Where do we stop? We stopped a month ago with um our first one was say Sue Angels. Um, thank you. Really need to know that that's really cool. Let's quickly have a look here. Gertniel, greetings. So let's say I have a company with 100,000 rent as a profit for the year. Am I allowed to take that profit and invest it where? And if it is allowed, let's see. Am I allowed to take the profit and invest it elsewhere? elsewhere? And if it is allowed, and how will that be taxed as investment amount? It will still be considered profit or an expense. So what normally happens is if you if you invest money, in us for instance, you make a profit of hundred thousand rand, and you decide that you want to buy asset for the for 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 the company, whatever the case might be, or let's say, for instance, you want to invest it in shares in the name of the company, then you can take that money. But remember, the hundred thousand rand you first can have to pay company tax on that, and whatever is left over, you can basically use to reinvest in your business. Reinvest might not be the right term, but you can use that that money that's left over to go basically buy assets for your for, for your company. Let's say, for instance, you decide you want to buy a delivery vehicle for 100,000 Rand, then that 100,000 Rand will not show as an expense. It will actually show as an asset inside the company. And the receiver of revenue says that he can write off the depreciation on that delivery vehicle um, every year. So normally in delivery vehicles, if it's like a bucky, then he can write off 25% per year of the cost of that vehicle as an expense. If it's a normal vehicle, then they say 20% of the value, value of the vehicle per year that it can write up as an expense, you see. So you'll still get some benefit, but you can't take that full 100,000 rand as a deduction. As it means as you decide you want to go buy shares, then that 100,000 rand on your balance sheet will just show that um, that investment in the listed companies, 100,000 rand, and then obviously that will be the cost. So one day when you sell those shares again, it depends if you sell it to 150,000 rand, there will be a proceeds of the sale of a fixed asset or of your investment, and that profit of 50,000 rand will get taxed. Depending on, on, on a couple of circumstances, it might get taxed on capital gains tax rates or otherwise normal tax rates. Um, let me quickly see. Yeah, so. So as I mentioned earlier, that investments is normally not an asset, but you can, and so you cannot deduct it from your income and reduce the taxable income. So you will have to use the after-tax profit for investing, and the proceeds from your investment will be taxable again. So if you put your money in the savings account and in interest, then that interest will get taxed again. Yeah. So they always want their share of your profits. Let's quickly have a look. Um, Gartnell, yes, same person. Yeah, like a, uh, your uploads are my personal favorite site. Thanks for the knowledge. It's really cool. Um, so you say, I'm so excited to see what you have. One day I'd like to come into your offices and get to ask all the questions that I have. In which province are you located? I'm based in the Western Cape. I'm based in a small town called Fishhook. Uh, we do online consultations as well. Most of our clients we see online these days. It's hard to ever that I meet clients face to face. So there's a nice thing about technology is my clients are all over the world, actually, not even in South Africa. We deal with people in Australia, New Zealand, England, Germany. Um, I've got some clients in Canada that we deal with. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you could, if you have a phone and you can do a WhatsApp call, then we can meet. Um, let's have a look, Leandra the Poet. Thanks for the video. I'm a director of this existing company, but not a shareholder. Would that disqualify my company, company from being a small business corporation? So that is... Um, as I mentioned, that, that the, the thing is with shareholders doesn't really get registered on any formal um, platform. And so you can, in theory, possibly get away of being shareholder without being a director. But I know in yours is the other way around. So you're appointed as a director. So the problem with that is you get registered um, at SIPC. Those are the guys who register the companies. And over there, they're obviously going to show or make it known that you are listed as a director of the company. So if such thing looks at the shareholding, you're going to have to prove to them that you're actually not a shareholder of the company as well, but that you're only a director. You see, so you must just make sure that you keep a documentary proof that you are not um, a shareholder of the company are. Then I think you'll still be able to qualify for SPC rates, but I think you're definitely going to raise some eyebrows there at such because the, the SIPSI platform is basically what they go back to to go see whether somebody qualified on um, as a small business corporation. Let's quickly have a look over here. Um, so here's the interesting thing. So I import and sell medical devices to customers. 
But in some cases, I supply devices on consignment. The customer uses them without paying for them, but they will be depreciated over three years period. Year period. Yeah. So what happens is if you look at Sage, I just want to just quickly find the report. If you look at the income statement, I just want to quickly show you where um, stock ends up when you actually record it for the first time. As you can see that if you look at the, I'm just working on the demo company and I just loaded one transaction. You can see here for purchases, I said that we bought 500 of whatever this 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 battery is. And then you can see the value is 500,000 rand. So what Sage does by default is all your stuff that you buy during the month get allocated to your cost of sales account. You see, so you can see over there, that is lying on Sage. And so what would happen is once you, um, at the end of the month, you're supposed to put in a journal of year to say that, okay, we've bought half a million rands worth of batteries, but at the end of the month, we still have 499 of those batteries left. So the journal that you would normally pass this year pass to get the, your cost of sales right, you would normally debit your, your stock amount on your balance sheet and you would credit your cost of sales with the closing stock you see. So now, if I say that I'm taking some of these items over here, these are I'm taking a hundred of those items and I want to list that as an asset, then it means that I would have to pass <clears throat> two journals. So I'm going to have to put one where I'm going to debit that consignment stock. So you probably can have to make a lot of different asset lines on your balance sheet to say consignment stock, stock batteries, 100,000 rand, so that is going to show your balance sheet. And then the other portion, the other 399 that's left over, you're going to pass the normal journal where you're going to credit your cost of sales account and you're going to debit your, your stock account, you see. So the only thing that you're going to have to keep record of, you're going to have to keep nice record of um, of those values over there. Probably going to have to keep like an asset register where you can keep track of exactly what assets are everywhere you see. So I think that's the only way that it will that will reflect. So if you just look at your balance sheet over here, you can see at the moment you've got equipment and motor vehicles and you can see over here's your current assets you see. So obviously they haven't passed any journals on, on, on this database over here. So what will happen is if you've got consignment stock, you're going to put a line over there to say consignment stock batteries, 100,000 rand, and then obviously <clears throat> the other side of that transaction, the other journal that you're going to be passing is going to be lying under your current assets. So you're going to be the one that's going to say stock, and then that amount will be inside the... <clears throat> hope that makes sense. <clears throat> and I hope that answers your question. Um, and just quickly see, <clears throat> been struggling for a long time. So you were talking about the such representatives. Hey, these guys, they're still battling... Um, sometimes we're lucky, sometimes we're not. We had a case yesterday where um, Sash came back and said, sorry, the car's ID is not clear enough. They can't read what's on the ID, so they can just not help us. That we have to make another appointment. So that's why with the Sash and representatives, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you've got the two different ways. So always make sure that you make the appointment because then you can sit with the cars and talk to them. And if there's normally, if there's issues or documents missing, they would normally phone you before the time to say, listen, we're missing an ID or the proof of address, then they still give you time to upload it. In our case, that is what happened. But then the co copy of the ID that they received, they said, sorry, 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 that's not good enough. They can't help us with that. Um, hi there. Can you apply for UIF if you resigned at work? <laughs> so I don't think you're going to come right with that. I know if you get retrenched, then you can apply for UIF. But if you if you resign, and as far as I remember, you cannot claim UIF then. But the best is give the Department of Labor a call, double check with them. It's always worth it. And when we find with it, uh, we find that with the Department of Labor, easiest thing is to find early in the morning. If you're not eight o'clock in the morning, then the chances are best that you're probably going to get through to them. Um, Roberto Philippus, how can I get in touch with you? So we've got a website called SA Accounting Network. And then if you want to get in touch with us, there's a contact us button over there. And you can see we've got accountants all over the place. So there's our office number over there as well. You can complete the form over there. And then we can obviously just get back to you as well. <clears throat> so that is normally the easiest. If you're looking for an accountant in the specific areas, if you go to Gauteng, these are all the guys that we work with <clears throat> that's listed in all the areas over there. Yeah, so it just depends on what you want to do. <clears throat> but put in the form on the website and then we can see how we can help you. Um, so let's quickly see, Leandra. <clears throat> so Sash requested some documents for me for, for verification. I submitted the docs the same day. 
and I'm still waiting for feedback. I know that the 21 days to finalize the verification, and in my case, 21 days will be on the 26th of November. Will I be penalized? The status on e filing shows correct and filed, and also says document submitted. Um, yes, I think you're good on your side. You have to wait for feedback from SARS. If after the 21 days you haven't heard anything from them, phone the call center. They will give you a reference number. So hold on to that reference number just as a proof that you did follow up on that. And then if, if it's something that has to happen, that you have to file an objection or anything, then at least you um, at least you do have the reference number there. Cool. Um, yeah, so they ask it as well, but if they finalize the verification of the deadline, I won't be penalized. No, you should not be penalized if they take too long on their side. Mm -hmm. uh, Veronica, let's have a look. I'm a university student, really got informed by a former employer, resigned end of July that I'm now registered as a taxpayer. The company had not informed me that they would be registering me, and I only received the SMS from SARS. My work hours uh, were for most of the part compliance with my required university retail hours of my degree. I have no idea if there is something amiss or the whole situation. Where do I begin with the whole process? As I mentioned, I shared the link over here for you as well, but you would need to go to this page over here and then you would register. You'll put in obviously your name, surname, are you a South African? Put in your ID number, choose date of birth. Next, I think next page they ask for a couple of contact details and addresses and stuff. And then once you complete that, you will get a screen where you can, I think, if I remember correctly, you choose a username and a password. And then that is really important that you keep that. Then on the next screen, they can open up a section where you have to upload a copy of your ID, proof of address, your proof of your bank details. And I think you need to take a photo. We're actually holding your ID book as well. And then upload those documents. But just make sure on those documents that he, the, especially the photo, we had it now again where, where the, the, the ID wasn't clearly, you couldn't read what was standing on the ID. And so I just rejected. So this guy was standing, he was holding the ID like this down here. So it was a very small picture. So Sash couldn't actually see. So I would suggest go like really close to your camera, hold the ID next to you like this, so the guys can see exactly what is happening on that thing. Otherwise, they're just going to reject it and they're not going to know why. Um, yeah, I hope that helps, Veronica. I hope you come right with that. Um, and let's quickly see. Ibra, any chance that I can get a one-on-one -on -one call with you? I'd love to clarify some site functionalities, please advise. You can do it with do charge your consulting fees. You can send me an email there at 100 so tax returns if you want to set it up. Well, otherwise, like I said, I've got all those videos on site. I'm sure that whatever you're betting with, you can find the answers there. But I do do consulting on site from time to time if people get stuck with um, technical stuff. <clears throat> How can you assist them? Where can I get hold of your company? As I mentioned, you can send me an email there. You can go to our website as well. There's a form over there that you can do. And I see that you were commenting on the home office expenses. So just make sure that if you go to this website, um, my SA Accounting Network website, you'll see on the home page over here, there's a button that I added over there to say home office expenses card. So this is the video on home office expenses. These are the search card. And this one over here downloads is the spreadsheet with all the details that you need to complete for us if you want to look at home office expenses. Um, let's quickly see. <clears throat> Is there any way of seeing how much a supplier is invoiced against their purchase order value? Mm, uh, Tanya, not as far as I know. And the only thing is, is I would suggest that you maybe keep a spreadsheet, um, you know, with different tabs. And on every tab, you put the purchase order value that they've loaded over there or that is approved. And then every time you create an invoice, you put it onto that spreadsheet and just keep track there. That is the only way that I know from the basic package of Sage. There might be some added... <clears throat> Um, like inventory systems that you can add to your Sage that will be able to manage that process as well. So I'm saying no, but there might be a way. It might be worth it to actually just contact Sage and just check with the cars there as well. How do you capture a cash payment from a customer? A customer received an invoice, but cash on hand was given and used for commission paid. A payment of supply used as petty cash. Irene, let me quickly show you. Um, so I'm just going to just pop in here. If we, let's say for instance, we go to banking and we are looking at the banking transactions itself. And remember that you've got different bank accounts set up. You can see over there is that one, there's a petty cash account, you see. So let's say for instance, you've got a client over here that paid an amount for you, let's say for instance, customer, and that customer, let's say for instance, was this guy. 
you can when you paid 5,000 rent and then you would normally go over here to allocate it against whatever invoices is outstanding. So it depends if you paid that invoice over there and we hit save. And then after that, the whatever the payment was, so if you paid commission, you would say commission. Just quickly see what expense accounts to there. You see quickly what expenses there. It depends as you decide if you paid computer expenses, but you can just add commission or whatever the case might be. And you say that they spend 5,000 rand again, then you can see that is how the transaction would be. So the only thing you must be careful for is just don't use a normal bank account because that transaction obviously didn't go through your account. It went through a cash, you see. So you need to show that you received 5,000, paid 5,000. If you didn't pay the 5,000, then just don't record this line over here, you'll see if I hit save changes, then you can see my balance over here is then supposed to go up to 6,150. Quickly see if it did, because that should be in theory what your cash balance is then. Yeah, so those transactions aren't difficult. Just use your petty cash account, <clears throat> then it's easy peasy. So you, even if you had to pay a supplier, instead of account, you'll use supplier, select the supplier, put in the amount, and then off you go. Um, now, and the net appearance. Um, how do I pre process custom state in banking to ensure transaction reflect correctly my VAT report and the input tax other goods in, goods important by you 15 aim. So you'll see that if you were working in the normal mm -hmm. Sage account, as soon as you see this thing uploads more. And you can see over here on this demo company, these are the selections that we have at the moment. You can see there's no VAT, zero rate, all these things, but on the full version, <clears throat> there are more selections over here. So then you can just go choose your, your, your imported rate, 15%, put it in there, and then you hit the save. So the only thing you must just make sure is that you set up your VAT correctly. You see, so on this tab over here, and you must just make sure that you've got your, your VAT codes properly set, properly set up. So you'll see if you had to look at this one over here, on this part of here is where you would set up all the different VAT codes to make sure that you've got the VAT allocations in the right place. You can see over here as the play is 15A, other goods important by you. So if you've got the full version, then you can see it, then over here you can choose the VAT code that must appear on that report. Cool, man. Hope that helped. Um, next one. They say, could I need a new case number to upload supporting documents for 2021 as the current one is embedded? Yeah, so as I mentioned, give Sasha a call. They'll definitely be able to give you the right case number because you don't want to use a wrong case number, otherwise your documents end up in the wrong place. Um, is there now a new way of submitting company representative documents? Yes. Um, I wouldn't say it's a new way. There's just a different way where if you had to make the appointment on the SARS website. So instead of having to go to this place over here, I'll just quickly go to the SARS website. That's it, eh? <clears throat> so let's quickly see if it loads um, online services. So normally over here, under online services, so it's normally where you would load the stuff for your representative. Come on, internet. But this is the place where you would normally submit, uh, where is the thing? Register representative over there. So instead of having to go that route, you just pop in there to say, make an appointment, make an appointment. You'll see one of these selections under other, I did a full video on that. You can decide that you want to update the representative details and it's much faster if you had to go that route. And the thing is you can still control some of the process as well. Um, thanks for this. Seems like I managed to do you finding. I tried a company called UIF Connect. Seems like they are scammed to be aware of and use a preset and the professional. You pay them 850, give them all the details and they just delay the process the whole time. Marco, I think the guys working with UIF is under a lot of pressure at the moment. Um, so I think you need to be a little bit gracious towards them as well, but just maybe send them an email so listen to If you don't come to the board, you'll give me um, more frequent updates of what you guys are doing, then I would say they maybe take it further. The problem with most of the guys that works with UIF doesn't get controlled by a controlling body. You know, for us as accountants, we belong to controlling bodies. Um, like an institute, I belong to CIPA, which is the Institute of Professional Accountancy. If my, account, my clients are not happy, they can always go there to go chat to the cars. Um, Jackie, hello, I'm going to be with you, 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 I'm going to be with you
cool. Yeah, so as I mentioned, if you transfer, if, if you move your stuff over from one company to another one, the first thing you must make sure on that specific date is that your balance sheet is, is, is looking right. Because otherwise, if you still need to make adjustments <clears throat> in the previous books and then from there move it over to the new one, then it's going to be very complicated. So let's say, for instance, you decide at the end of October, that will be your cutoff date. So then at the end of October, you must make sure that your balance sheet on FreshBooks is 100% right. Then you will take the bank balance at the end of October, put that as your opening balance onto, onto stage. Very quickly, this drag a screen over quickly for you. So if you had to go to banking transactions, you see specials. Mm, I wonder if on this demo company whether I've got that option over there. You see, there's a thing for opening balances or whatever. As on your previous accounting package, those balances you must enter onto the screen of here. You see, so you're going to put in the inventory. You can see your trade receivables, your trade payables, all the stuff over there. Your bank deposit, your bank balance over here. You're going to put in whatever the balance is on that specific date, and then you hit update. You must just make sure that this amount of year has got to be zero. You see, there's not supposed to be a difference over there. Once you've got your opening balance is right, as it means this was on the 31st of October, then you would set up your bank fee that it starts importing from the 1st of November. You see, so then everything should be fine. If you're, you're, you're changing over from a far back period, it's a printers from the 28th of February, so now we're like 10 months further down the line, then you're probably going to have to capture all the data over onto Sage from the 1st of March up until the date when you can actually start importing data. Because normally with the bank feeds, you can normally only import for about two or three months at a time. Um, hope that helps. Um, yeah, but that is what I would do. So make sure that the balance sheet is right on FreshBooks. Choose a date, for instance, 31st of October. Take those balances and put it in your opening balance screen over here. Hit the save button, and then it depends us from the 1st of November, you will start importing your transactions there. Um, let's quickly see. Uh, good day, sir. I wanted to know how much profit a company should make in order to qualify for payments of income tax. <laughs> well, if the company makes profit that's over than 100,000 then, will income tax still be compulsory? Of course it is. It doesn't matter if you make one rent profit, you will still be taxed. And I love this. Comment of yes, as someone told me that startup companies are exempt to pay tax. I wanted to know if that's true. I don't think that is true. <clears throat> Nabila, it would be lovely if startup companies <clears throat> were exempt to pay tax. The only thing that they do have is they've got those different tax rates. You can use turnover tax or small business corporation tax rate. So I think that's basically the only benefit that you get. So there's not really a thing to say that you're exempt from tax if you're a startup company. It would have been nice. I think your effect could do that. It would be really amazing. I think for small businesses, it's really, really difficult to get started these days. I don't know why they make it easier for the guys. <clears throat> Um, just had a such agent hang up on me because she could not explain the process. Thanks again. Oh, the representative thing. Oh, Shame, I feel so sorry for these poor dudes. You know, I think somebody at the top there sits and and then comes up with all these clever ideas, and the guys on the ground are going to be the client facing people. And those guys, yeah, I think they've got their hands full. Um, yeah, then be so. I think all we can do for those guys is we must just pray for them and just keep on phoning. Um, yeah, I think um, <clears throat> that is really cool. How does income tax work to South Africa? Does this apply to creatives? Uh, get smart quick. Yeah, for sure. I think anybody who earns an income kit is going to get taxed. Cool. Yes, like a, yeah, it would be nice if they've got different rules for different companies. I know that, <clears throat> that for creators, there is a certain thing where, where, where they've got certain incentives for people that's in like in movie industries and stuff, so certain benefits and stuff that you can apply for, but it's quite a specialized field that, and I think that's more for people that um, that come from overseas to come shoot movies in South Africa and they get some extra tax benefits and stuff. But for normal people, graphic designers, artists, musicians, if you make a profit, you're gonna end up paying tax, unfortunately, they always want their share. Um, Elise Stein, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm glad that you enjoyed the videos. Um, by the market, hey man, we had such a lack of time there on YouTube. I did a video with him, you guys must please go check it out. Um, this one over here, it was really cool. And I shared a little bit about my story of my first side hustle that I had over there, which was really like a <clears throat> shove. Um, let's quickly see, registered a company on Sipsy. <clears throat> when creating the SASH profile, income tax was not selected as a tax type. It is the company is not registered for any tax types. The area was picked up 
<clears throat> they tried to run a tax clearing certificate, <clears throat> would be would there be a remedy for this? I've contacted Sash, but that consultant seemed confused. So the first thing that I would do is I would go onto the SIPSI website <clears throat> and request a disclosure on that company because as soon as you request a disclosure, it will give you all the information on the company. It will show you what the tax number is and all that stuff you see. Um, if <clears throat> that is the case, that you do have a tax number, then obviously the next step after that is you need to appoint a representative at the receiver of revenue. After that, you need to link that company to that in director's e-filing profile. And then only after that, you'll be able to access the tax types. You see, so even if you just go into your e-filing profile, register the company in your profile, put the tax number in there, need to register because the representative isn't activated, we get know where you <clears throat> if they want to allow you to access the tax types, you see. So that is, I think, possibly the missing step is to do that representative first. Um, yeah, <clears throat> hope it makes sense. Um, but you see where I will see. <clears throat> That's really cool to hear, man. Your guys must go out to make lots and lots of money. So we can pay such a lot of money. And that's what it's about. You know, I always said to my clients that they're paying a lot of tax is not an issue. It's a good thing because if you pay a lot of tax, it means that you're paying, making a lot of money. So that's really cool. Yeah, hit it hard, make money. And <clears throat> as quick as you, vitamin X, um, great video. How do we calculate individual tax from those tables? For example, if my salary is 250,000 a year, then I, I pay 26% plus that amount or 26% of 200. Uh, okay. So let me quickly see if I can get the SASH tables quickly. SASH tax tables. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the SASH tax rates, let me just get this into the screen. And you look at these amounts. So if you earn these events is 250,000 men. So what was they what they're saying is that you got to take 26% of the amount above 216,000 rands. If I take my calculator and I punch that in quickly, 250,000. Minus two one six two hundred. It gives me thirty three thousand eight hundred. So multiply that with twenty six percent. Gives me eight thousand seven hundred and eighty eight plus the thirty eight thousand nine one six. So forty seven thousand seven hundred and four will be the tax for the full year. So as quick as see what you did. <coughs> so yeah. So it's twenty six percent of the amount above that. Above the 216,000 rand down. Yeah. So only 26 percent of that amount, not of the full amount. Your 103,000 tax would mean you'd be paying like flipping half of your money for to the receiver of revenue. So that's a bit steep. So I've got some good news for you. That's only 47,000 rand that you'll be paying. Um, yeah, cool. We've been struggling to register as a representative. Yeah, this is, I don't know why they're doing these things. They're making life so difficult for. People, they're making it more and more difficult for account to be compliant. Like I said, I had a client of mine. We're going for our third attempt now. So this guy's got three companies. The first two companies, 100%. The guy, the search, help them, no problems. Third person, exact same documents. Twice they came back and said, no, sorry, the ID isn't clear enough. They can't read what's standing on the ID, but the ID copy is as clear as daylight. You can see exactly every digit on there. Um, but it, it is what it is. If they say jump, we just ask how high. There's nothing else that we can do on that. Um, let's quickly see. Are there any free accounting software packages you can recommend? Mm, no, I saw somebody was talking about FreshBooks the other day. There was another one that we were using. Mm, the best would be to Google it. I know there was one that was really nice, but I think they withdrew out of South Africa and you said they can't, you can't use it anymore in South Africa. And I think yeah, some of your banks, I know that FMB, I've got a small business on the side, and FMB's got a, a small accounting package that's linked to the FMB account, which is really cool because it actually imports all the transactions straight into the system. So you don't need to do a lot of in capturing work, which is really nice. Um, and I've got another client that also uses it. Um, let's quickly see, um, representatives, um, system area when submitting, a hey, this is good in August, I've been seeing compiler to since then, so then I need to get clarity and hopefully a solution to my problem. So Mahalani, I would suggest just go make a new appointment, you know, go to that SAR, go to this one, no, not that one, if you go to your home page over there, <laughs> go make, a, make an appointment over there, say it is for a company, Obviously, fill in all the details over here. I don't think it's going to take me further without me completing it. 
But then, as quick as you, well, give me that thing. So over there, you're going to say, you want to make a telephonic appointment, the reasons you're going to say other. And you see over there is a thing to say, updating of representative details. So filling that, submit it on the next screen. Just remember, there's going to be a reference number. Don't lose that number. And then once you get that reference number and you've got the date for your booking, then that reference number is the one that you must then use. If you had to go back to the SARS one, um, you're going to go to online services. And then over here, there's the thing that says submit support and documents. So that reference number, you're going to pop it in here. That case number over there, put in all the documents over here, hit the submit button. And then you just obviously have to wait. At the moment, I think we've got about a week or so waiting. This is not extremely long that you wait for, you wait for your appointment. Mm, cool. Yeah, and that's it for today, guys. Um, thanks for all your comments on the channel. I really appreciate it. I really love helping you guys out. Like I said, time is a bit limited. We are heading into Christmas and we're also trying to close our offices quite soon. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Keep watching. I've got some really good stuff coming up in the new year um, that I've got um, that, I've, that, that I'm busy working on. Yeah, so keep on liking the videos, keep on watching, and we'll chat again soon. Thanks, man.